Grocery prices may be on the rise, but there are still a lot of things you can do to save money at the grocery store. Hey, if you absolutely dread like roaming the aisles of the grocery store every week <laughs> and seeing how the prices have risen since the last time you were in there seven days ago, you are not alone. I think all of us would probably admit that we are concerned. We're concerned about inflation. We're concerned about mm -hmm. the rise in prices. We're concerned about these crazy problems with the supply lines. So we are all concerned, but you know what? There are actually some tried and true methods that frugal people have figured out way that we save money on our groceries, and we're going to share some of them today on the program. Hi, I'm Larry. And I'm Hope. And we're from Under the Median, where we come on twice a week and talk about how to live frugally. Yeah, and grocery prices certainly are a part of what we all want to know about right now, about how to save money and do it more frugally. So let's get started. We actually have 50 strategies to share with you. We're going to run through them super quick. Let's get started. The first one is don't go shopping hungry. Yeah, I know I, that's like people say that and then you forget and you find yourself at five o'clock roaming the aisles of this grocery store, just randomly throwing things into your cart because when you're hungry, everything looks good. I was just going to say that everything <laughs> looks good. So have a snack yeah. before you walk out the door. Number two is know what you have on hand in your house. Now these first few tips are all things that I do before I actually walk out of the door to even head to the grocery store. And this certainly is one of them. You need to have a running inventory of all the perishable items you have on hand, items in your pantry and items in your freezer. Mm -hmm. Number three is use the store flyers. Plan your shopping around the items that are on sale. Yeah, and in relation to that, you also need to know which day of the week is best for you to shop. In general, the stores move to a new sales flyer on Wednesdays. So if there are some items in that sales flyer that are gonna be hot deals that everybody's gonna want, then you're gonna wanna make sure that you head to that store on a Wednesday. But always be aware of exactly when the stores in your area change to that new sales cycle. There's nothing worse, it's happened to me. You see the sales flyer, you head to the store thinking something is still on sale and nope, it's just gone off sale. So make sure you're aware of that. Shop once a week or less. Statistically, the less you're in that grocery store, the more money you save every single month. Plan your driving route to minimize the use of gas. Now, generally we say two to three stores. That's what we hit up every single week. We choose our three stores and then we map out, start with the store that is farthest from your home and then you work your way back toward home. So you're making a circular route and you're not doubling back, wasting precious gas and precious time. You know, another thing too, you can think about in relation to this, if you're out on an errand already, mm -hmm. try to stop at the store on your way if it's on your route. So try to combine your errands that would really help you know saving at least the gas and time as well the next one is look for coupons especially digital coupons every store every major grocery store uh, has digital coupons that are associated with that store and generally you need a store loyalty card but it really pays because some of those are incredibly high value coupons look ahead of time on the website for that store and match up those high value coupons with items that are already on sale now these first seven tips that we just gave you these are all things that i do before i actually walk out the door to even head to the grocery store if it would be helpful for you for me to delve a little more deeply into these areas and kind of show you a step-by-step -step review of exactly what i do before i go to the grocery store let me know in the comments section and i'll do a video on it for you the next item is use grocery saving apps now these are downloadable apps that help you find coupons or they actually give you cash back when you buy specific items during a specific period of time. There are two that we use regularly and really, really like. One of them is Receipt Hog. All you do is literally take a photo of your receipts when you get back from the grocery store and you gain points that you can then turn in for prizes or for cash back. And also Ibotta, which we really, really like. You'll find links to both of those in the description of this video. Number nine, leave a review on the manufacturer's website. 
Oftentimes, as a thank you, a manufacturer will send you a high yes, dollar coupon and maybe even offer you a free product. It's very worthwhile to leave those reviews. Now, don't be disingenuous in your reviews, but I have done this before when I've been super, super pleased by a product. I've let the manufacturer know how much I love it and they have rewarded that with some coupons. Let me know in the comment section whether you have done that. Become a fan. Now you're gonna to wanna to follow some of these uh, manufacturers with products that you really like. Follow them on social media, uh, tag them. If you talk about them on your social media, tag them so that they see that you've discussed their products. And then also you might wanna to go to the website and see if there's a way to sign up for like a regular newsletter that they send out. Those are ways that you're going to receive the high value coupons from those manufacturers. Now let's take a look at some tips that you can use while you're at the store. Yeah. The first one is get in and get out. Don't <laughs> spend a lot of time there. And I think another one that will follow in line with this is make sure you're taking a list in with you and stick to the list. Now, one of us is incredibly guilty of like wandering the store aisles, just looking to see if there's anything really awesome to make sure that I don't miss any of the deals that are in the grocery store. The other one will hurry me along and remind me that it doesn't matter because those things aren't on my list anyway. Look, you got two choices. You can take your spouse with you who will help you get through the grocery <laughs> store in record time, or you can actually get out your cell phone and you can set a countdown timer so that if you've been in the store more than 20 minutes, that cell phone is gonna let you know it's time to wrap it up and get out of the store. True story. I have no patience for shopping. <laughs> That I'm is absolutely true. Get it done kind of a person. I want to get in and get out. <laughs> Here's another reason why it's super important that you stick to that list. Yes, a viewer wrote with this brilliant strategy. Take a listen to this. Kroger has many goals to achieve by departments and store-wide. One is a goal for each store to have strategically placed items easily accessible for customers to come in and pick up so that each customer that comes in spends at least $50 per shopping visit. In the weekly meeting with department heads, those stores are mentioned by districts and the store number is recognized. Wow. Now we have talked about this in previous videos. There are lots of uh, things that stores deliberately do in order to encourage you to spend more time and more money. We did a whole video on it. I'm going to make sure that video is linked um, in the description of this video and I'll link it up above as well because I think it always helps to know these are what manufacturers and stores are doing to try to get more of your hard earned money. So Planning your visit, sticking to a list, yeah. and keeping focused is, is a, way, a really good way to fight that. Tip number 13, shop loss leader items. All right, what is a loss leader? Well, a loss leader is going to be an item that they're going to sell that's going to be a loss to them that's going to get you in the store. That's going to attract you in. Once you get in, though, you got to be really careful to stick to what your plan was. Absolutely. Number 14, compare unit prices. Make sure you take a calculator with you because sometimes those unit prices on the shelves, either A, they're not accurate, or B, you might have ounces compared to pounds or even liters compared to quarts. So they are mixing metric measurements with English measurements. So make sure you're comparing apples to apples. Buy case lots. It's always cheaper to buy in bulk. Some stores will actually reward you and give you, say, a 10% discount if you purchase an entire case of the same product. GFS, which is a regional, a Midwest regional grocery store, mm -hmm. Gordon F Food Service, they actually do that. Ask for help. Don't be afraid to get some help. If the shelf is nearly empty, they probably have some more product in the back. Don't be afraid to ask. This just happened to us. Uh, Kroger had Mandarin Origins on sale for an absolutely amazing price. Nowhere to be found in the store. <laughs> we went up to the courtesy desk, asked. She went in the back. They'd actually been delivered, but they hadn't been put out yet. So she got us two of these amazing four-pound boxes of Mandarin Oranges from the back. So don't be afraid to ask if you don't see what you want. 
look for coupons at the store. Oftentimes, the grocer will have a coupon set right near that mm -hmm. item. So kind of look for those. It's another way to save money. Some of these are high value coupons. Don't just assume because the coupon is there by that item that it's really not worth looking at. Sometimes it is. Have items price matched. Take in a flyer from another store where the mm -hmm. item's on sale. Now these have to match exactly. It has to be the same product, the same brand, the same amount. So if you if the store price matches, that's another way you can save money without running to 10 stores. Now, not all stores actually do price matching, so you want to ask another store policy ahead of time. Tip number 19, buy generic. If you're a fan of name brand food, this is a great time to try generic. Generics have come way up in value, guys, and they are worth giving them a try. And often major manufacturers will also put out a generic brand mm -hmm. of the exact same item. So oftentimes you're really getting a very high quality item, even though it is generic or the store brand. Now, Walmart has great value. Mm -hmm. Kroger's has their own brand. Mm -hmm. Those are almost always cheaper than the name brands. Tip number 20, buy larger containers. Sometimes this saves you money, sometimes not. Once again, mm -hmm. you need to do the math. We were just in at Walmart. Thank you, thank you, thank you to those of you who told me to check Walmart's prices. Great tip. I'm not a huge Walmart fan, but mm -hmm. I did find. I found tomatoes. Yay, finally, canned <laughs> tomatoes. And they were at a great price, and the larger can of tomatoes was less than 50 cents a can, which was what my goal price was. So um, the, the larger can of tomatoes, 28 ounces, I think was 96 cents. So that amounted to less than 50 cents per the smaller uh, 15 and a half ounce awesome. can of tomatoes. That yeah. was a great deal. Tip number 21, speaking of Walmart, shop Walmart or Aldi. This was what y'all have been telling me and you're absolutely right. Um, as far as Walmart and Aldi are concerned, they are neck and neck right now in prices, are which mm -hmm. I would never have expected. Some of the things that uh, we had seen at Aldi were actually less at Walmart. So don't make the assumption that Aldi is always going to be the less expensive um, option or that Walmart is always going to be the less expensive option. When it comes to grocery shopping, unless you're going to go to more than one store, it's very, very, very difficult to have one store that consistently has the lowest prices. Keep a grocery store price book. Now we offer one in our store. Hope we has do. made up one and I'll let her talk about that. Yeah, it's a grocery store price book. It's got some other forms in there that will help you make sure you're getting the lowest prices on your grocery bill. And I'll make sure there's a link to that product in the description of this video. Find alternatives to higher priced products. If you find that you are priced out of a certain product that you really, really enjoy using, look around and see if you cannot find something that will be a good and appropriate alternative to that higher priced product. Let's talk produce. Shop seasonally. Yeah, strawberries are always going to be at their lowest price in February and March. You're always going to find cabbage at its lowest price around St. Patrick's Day. If you shop seasonally and make sure that you stock up when they reach that lowest point, and then the extras that you're not going to be able to use before they go bad, make sure that you are either canning, dehydrating, or freezing them for later use. And you're always going to be eating those 99 cent a quart or $1.29 a quart strawberries, <laughs> even in the middle of winter when everybody else is paying $5 a quart. You want to buy in bulk when you find really low prices on items. There's always ways to preserve them. Yeah. You can dehydrate, you can freeze them, and you can can them. Number 26, look for holiday sales. You have to know that baking equipment like um, flour and uh, chocolate chips and butter and sugar, they're always going to go on sale around major holidays like Thanksgiving and Christmas. That's when you're going to find them at their lowest price. So be aware of those cycles in sales and make sure you're ready to stock up on those items when they reach that bottom dollar. Next item is to shop markdowns. If you're not sure when your store does the markdown, when they're clearing out items that are just about ready to expire, mm -hmm. ask the supervisor of that department. They'll be glad to let you know they want to sell those items rather than let them go bad. 
Tip number 28, be sure that you weigh prepackaged produce. Now we're talking about the five pound bags of carrots or even the two pound bags of carrots. That is the average weight that is listed on that package. It can vary by as much as a pound. Wow. So it pays to <laughs> take a few of those pa packages of carrots and weigh them to see which one actually weighs the most and buy the one where you're getting the most bang for your buck. Don't always buy the largest items. Sometimes stores, they're very aware that people think that they're saving money by doing this, mm -hmm. and they'll mark that item up. So watch those. Take your calculator, as we mentioned before, and do the math on the large item, the large quantity, and the smaller quantities to see which is the better deal. Tip number 30, buy a variety of ripeness. Bananas are the easiest example to give. You're gonna buy some bananas that are green, some bananas that have a little bit of yellow in them, and then finally you're gonna buy some straight yellow bananas, and you're gonna mm -hmm. eat them in that order so that you're always having some bananas that are ripening throughout the week. So buy a variety of ripenesses. This also is for like things like peaches or pears, or um, avocados, exactly the same thing. Buy items with a longer shelf life. Now, some produce will last a lot longer mm -hmm. than others. Lettuce typically will last about a week, mm -hmm. but cabbage will last a long, long time. time. What's a good amount of time on cabbage? Oh gosh, cabbage will last you at least two weeks, and I've had cabbage for up to four weeks, and it's been perfectly fine. It kind of depends on yeah. the temperature you have your refrigerator set at, too, is how long that will keep. The colder you have it set, the longer it will keep. Tip number 32, this is a specific one. Get your pineapples cored at the store. Oftentimes, they will core those pineapples for free, but tell them, don't get rid of that core. Go ahead and put the core in with it because I'm going to take the cores home because you're going to use those cores. You can use them in a variety of ways. You can put them in vinegar and you can make some pineapple vinegar with them. You can also slice them and cut them up really finely like in matchsticks. I've used them in stir fries. They are edible. Are they the same texture as the rest of the pineapple? No, but are they edible? They absolutely are. Buy your items whole. Well, what do we mean by whole? We mean uncut. The more labor that's done on an item, mm -hmm. the more it's going to cost. So if you get an item that's all cut up, you're going to pay more for it. So buy it whole. And finally, in the produce section, before we move on to the dairy section, guys, is be sure to check the frozen food aisle. Sometimes those bags of frozen vegetables, look, they have been picked they have been processed and they have been frozen generally within 24 hours of the time they came from the field. It's a really, really quick process. So actually frozen vegetables, sometimes you can get them less expensively than you can the actual uh, produce that has never been frozen. So make sure you're checking that frozen food section. Moving on to dairy, y'all know that we are vegan. So uh, mm -hmm. most of these tips, guys, if you're vegan like us, the dairy substitutes, these tips work for those two, all right? Yeah. So buy in bulk at the store. Did you know that you can freeze milk? If you remove about a cup of the milk mm -hmm. from the jug and put that in the freezer, that will freeze and it'll keep a long time. Yeah. When you thaw it, make sure you shake it up really good, mm -hmm. though, so you have the contents nice and congealed together. Tip number 36 when it comes to dairy, water it down. It's okay to buy whole milk and then mix it 50-50 with water. You're watering down your milk, but it's still milk, guys. You can also um, cut juice by one-third to one-half by adding water to your juice before you drink it. Buy your items powdered. You can buy powdered eggs. You can buy powdered milk. It's amazing. And it really works good. This is especially good if you're cooking with these items, that they, they work really good for that. They also actually have now powdered... Um, uh, non-dairy milk, which is kind of nice. Mm, so, yeah. That's good. All right. One thing they have not come up with is powdered water. <laughs> they don't know what to add. Number 38, no seasonal trends. So once again, know that butter is always going to go on sale before the holidays. Know when these items that you're looking for drop to their lowest price. A lot of times it's seasonally and sometimes it goes along with major national holidays. But when it drops, stock up. And when it comes to butter, vegan butter and those equivalents will also freeze as well. 
Tip number 39, check the warehouse club. Now, if you've been watching like in the community tab, we just told you guys that we found a Sam's Club membership for $8 for the year. Unbelievable. Our membership, that was unbelievable. Our membership had expired almost a year ago. And I said, what do you think, guys? You guys give me some <laughs> great things to think about whether we wanted to renew it or not. We decided to go ahead and renew it. it. So yeah, yeah. if you are a Costco or a Sam's Club member, make sure that you check there because sometimes... Uh, especially if an item that you want is not on sale, you will find it at a really good price at Sam's or Costco. Well, let's move on to meat. The first item on saving on meat is buy cheaper cuts. You know, you can put meat in a crock pot and that will tenderize <laughs> just about anything. So you can, you know, you can live on cheaper cuts and save some money by doing so. Skip the deli completely and you're going to buy that chub of either turkey or ham and you're going to have the deli cut it for you. It used to be free like at all grocery stores. Some stores are now charging you a small fee in order to slice it deli thin. The deli will do that for you. And when they slice it, uh, make sure tip number 42 that you ask them to keep the end pieces for you. As they run it through the slicer, like the very end of it won't go through the slicer. And if you don't ask, they may throw that out. Make sure you get those end pieces because they're perfectly edible. You can chop them real fine, use them in like omelets or casseroles or soups, uh, something like that. So make sure that you get all that you paid for. Buy your meat in large pieces and have the butcher cut it at the store. Most oftentimes they'll do this without any extra mm -hmm. charge. Yeah, they're happy to take the, the large um, pieces of pork loin and cut it into smaller pieces for you. So it's just easier to freeze that way. You can do it at home, but boy, if they do it, they got those really sharp saws and stuff and they can do it really <laughs> slick back there. Even large turkeys, they'll cut right through that bone and they'll cut the turkey in half for you and package both halves separately. The price per pound is exactly the same as you would have paid before. It's just that they've cut it in half for you. If you don't see the cut of meat that you're looking for, ask the butcher for help. Oftentimes they have another supply back in the back room. Mm -hmm. He can bring it out and process it. One time we waited, I think, five or 10 minutes at the store while they actually freshly packaged yeah. some meat. This is when we were eating meat. <laughs> uh, they freshly packaged it for us and it was really nice. He weighed it out and priced it, didn't charge us any extra for it. We got what we were looking for. So be polite, make friends with your local butcher. Uh, tip number 45, buy the bones, uh, especially at local butcher shops. You can go in and say, look, I'm just looking for bones to make broth or to make um, to make soup or something. And they'll sell you bones super duper cheap. We used to do that years ago when we still ate meat. All right. Tip number 46. Go direct. Bypass the grocery store <laughs> altogether completely. and buy it directly <laughs> from the farmer. Now, we had a farmer that lived about, oh, I think about 15 miles from us yeah. that we bought bulk beef from and we got really good cuts. Yeah, we did. It was excellent. It was grass fed. It was really good. A lot cheaper than we would have paid at the store for it. Tip number 47, grind or slice it yourself. So instead of buying hamburger, you're going to buy, especially if you find those other cuts of beef that are on sale, on clearance, really, um, really exceptionally low price. Just um, have a meat grinder and grind it yourself. Or you can even get those slicers, guys, and you can slice it just like the deli would. A little expensive, but if you're going to do a lot of it, then sometimes it's worth it to go ahead and invest in that. Buy it in bulk. Warehouse clubs are really known for this. That's right. Sam's Club, you can get big old things of meat, right? <laughs> so um, our advice, though, is when you get home, do not, A, don't throw the whole, like, thing into, like, you walk in from Sam's Club, you just throw the whole thing in your freezer. Don't mm -hmm, do that. Mm -hmm. In fact, don't do that even with smaller cuts of meat. Those, the packaging from the actual That's grocery store is not meant to go directly in your freezer. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is either take the smaller packages and put them into freezer bags, label them, and date them and put them mm -hmm. into the freezer. Or you want to just take those big, big things of meat that you're buying from Sam's, go ahead, take it all out, put it in smaller amounts that you're going to use for recipes. I put it in recipe size um, increments of meat, then freeze those separately in separate freezer bags. It keeps you from overusing it for one thing. And for another thing, it keeps you from getting freezer burn. 
shop around major holidays. Beef oftentimes goes on sale around 4th of July, yeah, Memorial War Day. Memorial Weekend. Yeah. And then you can also get uh, beef around St. Patrick's Day. It'll also go on sale because it's a favorite. Oh, that's right. You're going to score a bargain on corned beef near St. Patty's Day generally. Mm -hmm. Okay, tip number 50, eat less of it. Or guys, you knew this was coming right from the vegans. We're going to tell you, <laughs> you can skip meat altogether. Yes. But yeah. Uh, yeah, so just eat less meat. Use if, if your recipe calls for a pound of hamburger, put a half, half a pound of hamburger in it. Um, look up those recipes um, that use less meat and deliberately choose those recipes. So use far less of it because we know that you guys have told us meat has gone up astronomically high and we absolutely know it. Now, if you're interested in learning those tricks that the grocery stores are using to get you to spend more money, I loved this video. It was so fun for us to make because all of the marketing tricks and things that the grocery stores do, I learned it all in college and I told you all of those tricks in that video, it's right over there. Go ahead and take a look at that next.